I'll get you. No, I'll get you. But wait, aren't we friends? Oh, yeah, we are. Okay, let's go fight some bad guys. Hi. We look at the world around us as modern. Movies, pop culture, superheroes. We're surrounded by them. So much so that we don't really think about their historic roots. But sometimes if you look at the world just a little bit differently, it starts this snowball effect. You see that modern ideas might not actually be quite so modern. Take merchandising for an example. This is far from something we recently came up with. Character-based merchandise. Mm -hmm. When do you think that started? Uh, 1900s? 30s? 40s? I'm gonna guess between the 50s and 60s, and I'm probably wrong. Ah, wow, that's a great question. I, I'm really not sure. I'm really not sure. It's actually in the late 1800s, 1890. Oh, really? What, what was it? Uh, something called the brownies. I am constantly amazed at how old seemingly modern ideas actually are. This was no truer than when I went to Jeppy's and found the brownies. Created in 1883 by Palmer Cox, the brownies were based on Scottish folktales and they were a hit. While not everyone today remembers them, their legacy is all around us. They were the first characters to have merchandise created for them. They slapped the brownies on everything from toys to dishes to cameras. Now you know why you can't escape seeing Batman's face everywhere you look. A character is created, say in one medium, like Crazy Cat is created by George Harriman for newspaper strips, and then he goes over and becomes a toy, he becomes a cartoon series. We try to represent stuff like that. Felix the Cat, he becomes the world's most popular silent, silent film cartoon star, but then he also becomes a newspaper strip, and it becomes games, toys, dolls. He gets his likeness on everything. Toyetic is how suitable a movie or television show is for selling merchandise. So basically, Iron Man is going to sell more merchandise than the judge. But did you know that sometimes the movie and television show didn't come first? Take G.I. Joe's The Real American Heroes. That started as a toy line in the 1960s. The cartoon didn't come around to the 1980s, which was actually a good decade for shows based on toy lines. Some other examples? Hot Wheels, My Little Pony, He-Man, even Transformers. So yes, you have toys to thank for Michael Bay's robotic rampages that happen every couple of years. Then you go to 71 to 80, how things suddenly become more about the blockbuster, how merchandise comes from new areas, food, fast food organizations are creating icons that people are buying as toys to play with. They're taking Chicken McNuggets home as their friends. They're taking a Ronald McDonald doll home to snuggle up with at night. They have a Burger King toy to play with. They have uh, dolls related to their favorite mascots that are selling them food. And then you have all the continuation of movie tie-ins, how Star Wars is basically taken the idea of licensed material for a film and done with it that only like to the degree that Disney had done before, where they take this template, like we have an item, how do we sell it to the widest group? And they throw it on everything and amazingly it sells like hotcakes. It was like a billion dollar a year industry in the 70s. While today most of our toys are kid safe and based on the latest youth aimed movie or television show, this wasn't always the case. Toys were produced for movies that were R-rated and kind of violent. There were even dolls created based on amoral soap opera characters. But at least they were all safe, weren't they? I mean, it's not like someone tried to sell a toy that was radioactive, right? 
Right in there is the Lone Ranger Atomic Ring. It's the one that looks like a bullet with a little red tab at the end. This piece is amazing. It had an actual radioactive isotope in it. If you pulled the little tab off and looked in it, you could see the flickering of this little uh, radioactive element. So they actually had a ring that was encouraging kids to put radioactive material yes. right up to their eye. And put it on their finger all day long. <laughs> it was apparently one of the greatest successes and the effects will never truly be known. Say you're like a 12 or 13 year old and you have your Star Wars toys that are contemporary uh -huh. and you walk in here and then they can see where they came from. Modern okay. toys, comics, television shows that we're so inundated with. Then you get to come in and see something that, you know, see it how it was in the past. Comic books haven't always been held in high regard in our culture. They used to be seen as funny books or a sign of delinquency, but now they're a billion dollar industry with movies, television shows, toys, and video games being based on them. Some, kind of like Watchmen here, are even being held up as great literature. Next episode, we go back to Jeppies to see if we can figure out why they were seen as bad and what caused the switch. See you then. Mm -hmm.